Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another fun and free crochet pattern. Today we're working on the Sunrise Coaster. Isn't it cute? So I created the Sunrise Coaster pattern to be a perfect beginner project. If you've mastered the basic stitches and you're finally ready to apply them to your very first project, then this is the one. It's got five simple rounds and it's finished with this adorable scallop border. And who knew you could practice so many different techniques with just one tiny project? I'm talking magic ring, double crochet, working in the round, and the list goes on and on. And to make things even easier, I'll be with you every single stitch of the way. Now, before we dive deep into these cute little coasters, let's get Give some love to today's video sponsor, Bright Sellers. Bright Sellers is a monthly wine club that matches you with wine you'll love. Start off with their brilliantly short quiz and their experts will match you with reds, whites, and rosés that'll knock your socks off. And the best part is they deliver the good stuff right to your door. I've been rocking with Bright Sellers for a while and I have to say every single box that I get gets better and better and better. They really do take your suggestions to heart, which I appreciate because I'm not really a wine person. It's like, I know what I don't like better than what I do like. So the Bright Sellers experts can take that information and tailor a box to my personal taste, which cuts out all that anxiety I get trying to buy wine at the grocery store. I swear, I just keep getting the same thing because I just don't know what to do when I get there. Now this time around, I did receive a nice mix of wines, including a Cab, a Merlot, a California white blend, this adorable rosé, a Chardonnay, and this really sexy looking red blend. I was in the mood for something light, so I popped open that rosé really quick and honey, I was in heaven. Now, I don't normally have anything nice to say about rosés, but this one was especially good. So I checked the info card for more details and I realized why it is that I like this wine so much. It's a dry Spanish rosé with some fruity notes and it bursts with brightness on the palate, leaving this pleasant dry finish. Now, I envision sipping this wine with my girlfriends while we gossip in the hot tub, but this bottle especially is just for me and the true crime doc I have queued up for this evening. Now, if you want to expand your wine knowledge and stay ready for every fall function, make sure you get in with Bright Sellers right now. For a limited time only, you can enjoy 50% off your very first six bottle box, making this whole shebang 55 bucks, including shipping. $55 for six bottles of wines picked by experts for your personal taste. Seriously, what is not to love? Head down to the description and click my link to take the Bright Sellers taste quiz and get ready for some truly delicious wines. Big thanks to Bright Sellers for continually sponsoring my videos and thank you so much for watching because if you didn't, I wouldn't get opportunities like this. So I really appreciate you being here. And you know we can't pick up our hooks without giving some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. I'm drinking tea from home today, but all I can think about is that pumpkin cream cold brews are back at Starbucks. They're my weakness. I literally cannot help myself. But I would love to know what's your favorite fall drink. Let me know down in the comments. So today's cup of caffeine sponsor is Katie. Bye. When donating, Katie said, I've been crocheting for 22 years using crochet as a coping mechanism slash therapy session. I recently just started to expand my horizons, your videos, and your amazing personality helped me expand my knowledge as well as bringing joy to my heart. So thank you so much for what you do. And thank you so much for your kindness, Katie. I am obsessed with crochet and the fact that I can share that joy with you means the world to me. So thank you for the support. Now, if you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows? I might shout you on my next video. Now let's make the sunrise coaster. We'll need just a few supplies to make our sunrise coaster, starting with worsted weight cotton yarn. I like 24 seven cotton for this project. This yarn comes in lots of different colors and is becoming easier to find in large craft stores. The mercerized cotton has strong stitch definition and holds up well to machine washing. Swap it out for the worsted weight cotton yarn of your choice. We'll also need a four and a half millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. To start our coaster, we need to begin with the magic ring. Here's how I like to make mine. I'm going to lay the tail of the yarn over the palm of my hand and then take the part of the yarn that's coming from the skein and wrap it around my first finger two times. Then I'm going to take this first loop and bring it over the second, second loop over the first and off the tip of my finger, just like that. I'm gonna let it hang out there and grab my two tails and I'm gonna gently pull to tighten the knot. So now, when I tug on the tail of my yarn, I have an adjustable ring. I'm gonna now flip that ring up ways so that the knot is at the top. I'm gonna insert my hook, and you can see that the yarn naturally yarns over the hook. I'm gonna pull that loop up. This does not count as our first chain. So now I'm going to chain two. 
and this counts as our first double crochet. Now I'm going to put 11 more double crochet into my ring. So I'll yarn over from back to front around the hook, insert into the loop of our magic loop, yarn over, pull up the loop, then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops again. Again, for a double crochet, we yarn over from back to front around the hook, insert into the ring, yarn over and pull up the loop. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through the last two loops on the hook. So at this point we have one, two, three double crochet. We need 12 total. So here we go. Here's four. Here's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Just like that. Now this is what we have so far. We need to make this into an actual closed circle. So I'm going to grab my tail, kind of pull it to the front here. I'm going to hold on to the tail with my left hand and hold on to the knot of my magic ring with my right hand. And as I pull this tail, my magic ring will start to close just like this. Now I can insert my hook back into the loop. The first two chains of my first double crochet are right here. I actually want to slip stitch into the top two loops of the next double crochet. So this is my next double crochet right here. And these are the top two loops. I'm inserting my hook under both of those loops. I'll now yarn over, pull through that first loop and the second to close the ring and complete the first round of my coaster. Now we can move on to round two. For round two, we're going to begin with a chain two. Here's one and two that does count as my first double crochet. I'm now gonna put two double crochet in the same space as the join. So right in this double crochet here at the base of my chain. I'll yarn over and put one and two right into that same stitch. So now I have three double crochets. I'll put two double crochet in the next stitch as well. So we're going to find the V's here at the top of this next stitch, insert our hook under both of those V's, complete a double crochet, and go right into the same stitch to complete another double crochet. And we'll do that all the way around until our last stitch. So into the next stitch for two double crochet, into the following stitch for two double crochet, into the stitch after that for one and two, into the stitch after that for one and two. And we'll do that all the way around to the last stitch. So you may get to this point and think you're done with your round, but let's give a quick count. We should have 24 stitches here when the round is over. Let's see how many we have so far. So I'm going to lift my loop up and out of my work, and I'm actually going to count the Vs at the top of my stitches so I can get an accurate stitch count. So I have one. This is the one that my loop is coming out of. This counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, and these first two chains count as my first double crochet, so I have 23. I actually need to place one more stitch. So we're going to place that stitch in our last stitch, which is right here. So this is the stitch we just worked into. There's one final stitch here. Since that first chain two counted as our first double crochet, we can place one more double crochet right here, and that makes 24. Now we're going to skip this first chain two and slip stitch to join in this first double crochet. We're going to find these two loops here at the top, insert our hook under both of those loops, yarn over, 
and pull through everything on the hook for a slip stitch. And that completes round two of our coaster. It's looking great so far. Let's move on to round three. We'll start round three with a chain two. There's one and two. In this round, we need to work an increase. So two double crochets in the next stitch and then one double crochet in the stitch following that. So our first two double crochets are gonna go right at this stitch at the base of our chain two. So we've got one and two double crochet going here. We're gonna follow that with one double crochet in the following stitch. And we're gonna repeat that around. Two double crochet in the next stitch. There's one and two. One double crochet in the stitch after that. Two double crochet in the next stitch. There's one and two. One double crochet in the stitch after that. Keep it going. Two in the next stitch. And one in the stitch after that. Two in the next stitch. And one in the stitch after that. And we'll repeat that all the way around. So we're at the last repeat of the round. We have a stitch here, which is going to get two double crochet. Here's one and two. And now we need to do a quick count. So we're adding 12 double crochets each round. So we should have 36 stitches at this point. Let's lift our hook up and out and count our stitches. So our live loop right here at the base is our first stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 1, 32, 33, 34, 35, and this last chain two here makes 36. So we are all done and we can slip stitch in this second double crochet in the top two loops. So we're skipping these first two chains of our first double crochet, going up to the V of the next stitch. We're gonna insert our hook under both of those loops, yarn over, and pull through everything on our hook to complete round three, and we're ready to boogie on to round four. Let's do it. For the fourth and final round, we'll start with a chain two. There's one and two. And the repeat for this round is two double crochet in the first stitch, and then one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Let me show you how that's done. So we're going to go into the stitch right here at the base of our chain and place two double crochet here. So here's one and here's two. Next, we'll double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So here's one in the next stitch and one in the following stitch. Again, that's two double crochet in this stitch here. There's one and two, one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Two double crochet, so we increase here. One double crochet in each of the next two stitches. And we'll repeat that, we'll repeat that, we'll repeat that around the circle. So we've got two double crochet, and then one in the next stitch, and one in the stitch after that. Two double crochet in the same stitch, one in the next stitch, and one in the stitch after that.
So now we're at the last repeat of our round. I like to do a quick count here just to reassure myself that I am on the right track and I will end my round with the correct number of stitches. Now we were adding 12 each round. First round had 12, second round has 24, third round has 36. So can you guess how many stitches we're meant to have in this round? Correct, it is 48. So let's give a quick count and see how many we have so far. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We're missing three stitches. So now we are going to place two double crochet in the next stitch. There's one and two and one in the stitch after that. So those are the three stitches we needed because of course that first chain two counted as our first stitch. Just like before, we're going to skip that chain two, slip stitch in the top two loops of the following stitch to close out our round. And now we get to the really fun round. That is our border round where we get to add this gorgeous little scallop. So let's do that. Our fifth and final round is done quite differently compared to our other rounds. We're going to start actually with just a chain one. And then here at the base of the chain, we'll place a single crochet into the stitch. To do your single crochet, you're gonna dip your hook down into the stitch, bring the yarn over, pull up that loop. You've got two loops on the hook. We'll then yarn over and pull through both of those loops. There's your single crochet. Next, we're going to skip the next stitch. So this is the stitch we just worked into. This is the next stitch, which we'll skip. And in the following stitch, we'll place five double crochet stitches. So this is our fan stitch, which is what will give us this beautiful scalloped edge here. So we're going to yarn over our hook, make sure you skip that next stitch, work in the stitch after that and place five double crochet there. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four and five. So after we make our scallop, we now need to skip the next stitch and single crochet in the following stitch. What you'll notice is that single crochet anchors the scallop to our project. So we have that beautiful seamless edge. After that single crochet, we'll skip the following stitch and place a fan in the next stitch. So that's five double crochet here. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Skip the next stitch, single crochet in the following. Skip the next stitch, five double crochet in the following. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Skip one, single in the next. Skip one, five double crochet in the following. One, two, here's three, four, and five. Skip the next, single in the next. Skip the next, five double crochet, and the one after that. Skip the next, and a single goes in the one after that. Skip the next, five double crochet next. And we'll repeat that all the way around.
So here I am towards the end of my round. You can see that I've got these two stitches here and I also have kind of my starting single crochet over here. So I just completed a single crochet. I need to skip one and place five double crochet in the next stitch. There's one, there's two, three, four, and five. So that is all the stitches that I need to place on this round. The last thing I need to do is join. So I'm gonna join with a slip stitch in the top of my single crochet, which I can see is right here. So this is the post of my single crochet. And here at the top is the little V. Those are the two loops of my single crochet. So I'm gonna insert my hook under both of those loops, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on my hook to complete that slip stitch. I can now grab my scissors, Leaving just a couple inches for a tail, I'm going to fasten off my work here. Now I'll just need to weave in my ends. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle, thread my yarn onto my tapestry needle, and before weaving in my end, I actually like to tuck this end towards the back of my work. So you can see it's coming out the top here. I'm just gonna go between the post of this single crochet, push my needle through, and bring that yarn to the back. Now it's basically invisible. I mean, nobody would be able to see that unless they were looking way, way too close. But we crocheters know when our work is done right. <laughs> and this feels right to me. So I just bring that loop through the post of that single crochet. I can now weave in my end on the back of my work. I'm going to follow kind of the lines of my work because I want to keep my tail as hidden as possible. And I'm going to make my way under the loops of this fan stitch here. So here's my tail. I'm going under a couple loops here. And then I'm just going to make my way under the loops of this fan stitch, one direction, and then I'm going to head back the other direction. That's secure enough to me for my ends. If you want your ends to be even more secure, you can put a dab of fabric glue here. They are machine washable uh, fabric glues typically. So a little bit of glue here is going to make sure that end doesn't make its way out. We do have one last end. It's the one here coming from the middle of our work. And this one is very important because if you do plan to wash your coasters, we don't wanna worry about our magic loop coming undone. So the first thing I'm going to do is tighten that loop down as tight as I can get it, which is pretty tight with mercerized cotton. And now I'm going to create a knot. I'm going under the loop of one stitch just to the left of my yarn. And now I'm going to do what's essentially a French knot in embroidery. This is not necessary, but again, I'm always worried about my magic loops coming out. So you can't over knot it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap that tail around the tip of my yarn twice, push my needle through, and then with my thumb, I'm going to hold on to that loop, and then underneath my thumb is going to be a teeny tiny little knot. I'm then going to take my ends, and I'm just going to work through a couple loops here of my magic loop. And again, this is probably overkill. It's probably not necessary, but at least I know that if I gift this or if I'm using it during a busy holiday season, nothing is going to happen to my coaster. and that is my end secure. Now, if we take a look at my coaster, it's nice and flat. I maintained even tension throughout, so I don't have to worry about blocking this, but if you did have any kind of cupping or bunching within your project, what I would recommend is taking a steam iron, letting it hover over your project, get it nice and damp, and then lay this between two heavy books for just a few minutes until your coaster is nice and flat. After you wash them, I would also recommend skipping the dryer and instead just laying them between two heavy books for a couple of minutes and then letting them air dry. Now when you're making your coaster sets, I recommend having a lot of fun putting together some fun colors. Lion Brand 24-7 Cotton has lots of colors that I absolutely adore. And you can see I went a little bit nuts picking color combos. So don't feel restricted to make your entire set out of the same colors. And you can also make a bunch like I did and mix and match them based on your tablescape or make a custom set for friends or family. Or if you're selling these at craft shows, you can put four of these together, wrap them in twine 
online and sell them as a set as well. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial for the Sunrise Coaster set. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Make sure you tag photos of your coasters with hashtag TOYC makers on Instagram and drop by my Facebook group of the same name to show off your project and let us cheer you on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.